Welcome back. We're just running around doing side quests. I don't mind. Never mind spending time in the Citadel. I guess we should go and um, tell Chalik we did the thing and also talk to Jalit again. Yeah, these videos are probably going to come out a lot slower than normal, because I'm make, making them a lot longer than normal. And I'm uploading them as I make them. Not every day, and I definitely don't have as much time to play as I used to. Because, you know, I'm married and um, have a job. Fortunately, still have a job. I work working from home nowadays, of course. Hello again. Did you have any luck finding Shorbin? I found out you've been lying to me, Jalid. Lying? Why would I lie to you? You forgot to mention the data about the Keeper. Uh, he told you? I didn't mean for any of this to happen. I was afraid Shorbin would kill me to get the data, so I... Well, I was hoping you'd take care of him. I'm scanning the Keepers for Shorbin. You two need to stop fighting. You're... You're helping us? But... Well, if you say so. Well, if Shorbin can forgive and forget, then so can I. I appreciate the help, Commander. I better go get that data analyzed. All right. I think you can't postpone a lot of these missions until later, in which case you get way more money for them, but again, that's not really a problem in this game. Commander, I hear you have something for me. Here's your shipment, Chalik. Excellent. This is everything I need. Hmm. Huh. Maybe more than I need. Here, Commander, take this. I won't need it. You've earned some payment for your work. I appreciate your help. It shows a lot of integrity. You didn't need to do anything after I let Jenna go. Now I need to get these mods into evidence. Thanks again, Shepard. Alright. We got some experience for that, but... Yeah, I guess that's the whole thing. We don't need to go back and talk to Rita, although I think we can later. Oh, we still got the uh, Asari consort to deal with, and the um, these are UNC missions. And we need to finish the signal tracking, which is also in that neighborhood, so... Let's head down to the embassies and talk to Zelton. Um, which way am I going? Yes, this way. Oh yeah, and we need to deal with Batya's wife situation, which is also there. Um... Presidium. I like how I increased the difficulty and then we had one fight, in which I nearly died, so we'll see how that goes. Kind of just got unlucky there. Though. It's much easier to not notice here that you're, like, almost dead, but... At least the UI makes it a little more obvious. So they finally did it. I knew one of your kind would make Spectre one day. I only hope you're better than the one they're sending you after. I'll do everything I can to stop Saren. Hmm. That's what worries me. Was there something you wanted? 
Uh, I don't think we need... I'll be going now. I don't think there's Goodbye. anything new there. Can't talk to him about the investigation, even though it's over now. Guess we don't need to. My goodness, you're Commander Shepard. Your activities made for quite a briefing in the diplomatic corps. Is there something I can do to assist you? Yes. A man named Samesh Bhatia is having some trouble claiming his wife's body. Ah, Mr. Bhatia. A good man in an understandably frustrating position. I wish I could help him. Serviceman Nirali Bhatia died on Eden Prime, as Mr. Bhatia no doubt told you. Her wounds are inconsistent with any type of weapon damage we've seen before. That is why her body is being held. You think that her body might be dangerous or contaminated? No, Commander. Nirali Bhatia is not dangerous. Her body is in fact extremely valuable to the Alliance. The tests we're conducting may lead to better defenses against Geth attacks. Respectfully, Serviceman Bhatia may save more lives in death than she did in life. How long do you think this research is going to take? This is a long-term study. I wouldn't expect the bodies to be released for a year or longer. I don't think if you um, let him keep the body, it actually comes to anything. Like, it would be nice if the, doing that would mean you get some kind of upgrade later or something. Maybe even in the second game. I don't think it does though. In general, being Paragon is too often the right option in this game. It'd be nice if there were a few more, you know, actually difficult decisions to make if you want to stay Paragon. There are a few, like the uh, the Gev virus in Mass Effect 2, but not enough. You gotta have a lot of bodies. Can't you release one? Very few bodies had this new type of weapon damage, and very few were in good enough condition to study. Beyond that, Commander, we need as many bodies as we can to get a reasonable sample size. When will this research result in actual new technology? If we're lucky, we'll actually realize usable technology from this study in a few years. I understand what you're trying to do, but holding the body is wrong. Commander, you of all people should understand how far we must go to protect humanity. Not if we lose our humanity in the process. I am out here fighting to stop crap like this. All right, Commander. You win. It was hard enough refusing Mr. Bhatia. I'm not going to risk an incident by refusing you. Tell Samesh that the body is being shipped back to Earth. I'll go now to see to it myself. All right, uh, let's go uh, and tell Mr. Bhatia. Always go the wrong way here, literally always. These leaf textures are just the ones that, no, they're just dark. They're not, they are loaded in. Hello again, Commander. Has there been any word? I reminded Mr. Bosker what we're fighting for. Your wife is coming home. Thank you. I will return home and begin my preparations. It does not bring me happiness, but it may bring me peace. Goodbye, Commander. Wait, doesn't, didn't Ashley know his wife? I think you get some extra dialogue if you have Ashley with you, which I think I did in Let's Play, but... Completely forgot about it until now. Again, that's why I prepare my let's plays rather than... Anybody here? I don't think so. No. I think they're waiting for us at the... Docking bay? Or... Forget. Speak to the ambassador at the Alliance docking bay. Yeah, that's what I thought. I understand what you're saying. There's Zelton. The uh, Elcor looking good too. Hello there, human. Sincere apology, but I am here on business and cannot be distracted right now. I've come to talk to you about your little problem. Curious. 
What do you know about the consort and her relationship to me? I know who revealed your secret. It was a Turian named Septimus. Unbelieving, I know this Septimus, and he could not learn my secrets. The only way he could learn them is from the Asari consort. Here, there should be proof enough for you. Confused. This is difficult to fathom. If the Turian could learn this on his own, dismayed, anyone can discover my secret. Septimus is a powerful man, and it wasn't easy for him to find. Relieved. I suppose you are correct, human. Thank you for this information. Startled realization. I must speak with the consort. She will be most displeased with my actions. Anxious request. Please, human, if you will excuse me, I must go now. I'm sure she'll forgive you. It was an honest mistake. Doubtful. Perhaps you are right, human. I can only hope so. Thankful. That was a great thing you did, Commander. Approving. You see, then not all humans are as you say. I'm sure the Earth Clan stands to profit from this in some way. Apologetic. Do not listen to my Volus compatriot. It was a good thing you did, regardless of your intentions. I only did it for the XP. Can you stand still, Tali? You're kind of bouncing a lot. Um. Pleased greeting. Human, it is always good to see your kind. I am Ambassador Kalen. Genuine query. Is there something I can do for you this day? I, I genuinely love talking to these two about their culture. Just that's kind of my favorite thing in the whole game in general is learning about all the different cultures and all the lore they created for this, which is so impressively deep. Why do you explain what you're about to say? Our people communicate less through words and more through scent and slight movements. Plainly, we discovered our vocal expression was not enough to convey the feelings of our conversations to other species. Why do you bother, Kaelin? These Earth Clan don't really care about our ways. Remorseful response, Din. You don't truly believe that, and if you do, I am very sorry for you. Tell me more about your species. Genuine enthusiasm. I delight in telling the history of my people. It is agreeable to share our culture with others. Tell me about the history and origins of the Elcor. The Elcor were just beginning to explore Council's space when the Asari first made contact with us. With their help, we discovered the relay closest to our system, and from there the Citadel. Proudly. Within one lifetime we established a regular route to the Citadel, and quickly became one of the more active species living on this great station. I'd like to know more about the culture of the Elcor. Frankly, we Elcor prefer the safety and familiarity of our own colonies to the confines of space travel. Our society is built on small, tight-knit groups, though we are always welcoming to outsiders. Our government tends to be very stable. Our people are not very comfortable with sudden changes. The elk are probably like the nicest species in the entire universe. What do you do here? Modestly. I work to bring the problems and the requests of the Elcor groups to the attention of the Council. Ha! They only give us these positions to keep us quiet. The Council doesn't care about our races. Chastising rebuke. Your tone is inappropriate, Dan. This human is not to blame for your malcontent or your misconceived suspicions. It's kind of a shame that such a nice guy has to share an office with the Volus Ambassador, who is an asshole. Goodbye, Ambassador. Sincere farewell. 
Good day to you, human. Enjoy your time on the Citadel. Well, the new Earth Clan Spectre. Obviously, you are already lost. Your ambassador is next door. Chastising remark. Don't be so rude, Dan. At least introduce yourself. <sighs> I am Din Korlak, Volus Ambassador. Is there something I can do for you, Earth Clan? What is this place? You are in the embassy for the Volus and the Elcor. Your ambassador is next door, in his own office. In this shared space, I aid my fellow Volus when I'm not being interrupted. I'd like to know more about the Volus. I'm sure our history and culture would bore you, Earth Clan. Actually, I would like to know more about your history. My people came to the Citadel shortly after the Asari and Salarians had discovered it. We were instrumental in establishing a standardized galactic economy. However, despite our long association with the Citadel and our many contributions to galactic society, we still do not hold a seat on the Council. You know, if somebody came up to me and asked me to explain the history of humanity, I don't think I'd know where to begin. Or even just the history of, like, the Netherlands or something. Tell me about Volus culture. We are tribal by nature, but our ways are not violent. We barter and trade our lands and tribe members in order to increase status. Larger tribes often engulf smaller ones and eventually split again. Our society is very malleable, and our government is always shifting and changing. Since we're not physically adept, we trade our services for protection. With the exception of the Biotic God, of course, who is very physically adept. And the... the Volus, uh, squad mates in Mass Effect 3 multiplayer. Which unfortunately isn't part of the Legendary Edition. Although maybe that's fortunate, because I probably wouldn't want to spend another 500 hours on that. What is it you do here? I look out for the best interests of the Volus people. No easy task, considering how often we are overlooked by the Council. Chastising rebuke, Dan. The Council favors your species greatly. You are naive. The Earth Clan will be invited to the Council long before our species will. He's not wrong. It's kind of weird, yeah, if you consider how short we've, uh been here. I guess military tech talks. Why aren't the Elcor or Volus part of the Council? All species must prove themselves before they join the Council. All but the Earth Clans, it would seem. Dismissive. Ignore the Volus Ambassador, human. He is incorrect in his assessment. Really? How long have we been waiting? How long do you think we'll continue to wait? Bah, this talk is wasted on the humans. You seem to have a bit of a chip on your shoulder, Din. That's an understatement. You humans are new to the Citadel, and yet the Council has granted you great favor. Oh, chastising rebuke, Din. Your species has always been granted many concessions. Bolus territory has expanded tenfold since coming to the Citadel. <laughs> Details. We still have no real say in the decisions that affect Citadel space. Goodbye, Ambassador. Yes, yes. Good day, Earth Clan. Um. Wait, I think there's some keepers I missed on the other side here, aren't there? Pretty sure there are. Didn't scan those yet. Should have done that while I was here. There's one in this room, I think. There he is.
Is there... No, wait, that's where he came from. Um, is there one in... His office? I thought there was, like, one in a weird weird spot here, but... No, not here. Oh, there's one on the balcony behind the... Bar. That's what I'm thinking of. Still can't talk to you, can I? I don't have time to nope. talk now. I'm very busy. That's the one. How many more do I have to go? Three more. I know there's one by the Donking Bay, and I think there's one... Um, ...in the Citadel Requisitions Office. I do not know which other one I might have missed. Oh well, I'll look it up if I have to. Or since I'm uploading this as I'm playing, maybe somebody will point it out to me. I'll have plenty of chances to complete that mission and get way more money for it. Anyway. Um, I'm only going to the opposite side here, so... Probably not really any point to using fast travel. Because that would put me by the store anyway, and I need to go to Shira's. Which is right here. I went fairly often when it was still the archives. Yeah, ever since Fist took Well, Fist isn't the problem anymore, so maybe they can go back. I like how the only person here with a private chamber is the the consort. Like anybody else here who visits one's privacy? Too bad. Commander, I recently received a lovely note from Septimus. Thank you for speaking with him. Even the Alcor diplomat has withdrawn his campaign against me. It was my honor to aid you. You are too kind, Commander. But I would not expect you to help me out of the kindness of your heart. I also have one more thing to give you, if you are interested. I'd be honored. I offer a gift of words, an affirmation of who you are and who you will become. I see you. Your uniform fits as though you were born wearing it. You are a soldier through and through, proud, solitary, alone. But it gives you strength. That strength is what kept you alive when everyone around you was dying. You alone survived. You will continue to survive. This may be who you are, but it is not who you will become. It only forms the basis for your future greatness. Remember these words when doubt descends, Commander. And yeah, you can have sex with her. Uh, which does not grant you the Paramore achievement, I believe. Um, but I'm not interested in that. You have quite a gift, Shaira. Thank you. Not everyone appreciates it as you do. Never underestimate the power of words. Here, Commander. In light of your efforts with the Elcor Ambassador, I would like you to have this small trinket. Oh yeah, the story you can unlock on one planet in this really hard to reach spot. I'm very curious to see how Mako uh, is gonna behave. What is it? A small mystery. I have never learned its use or purpose, but I sense it is time for me to pass it on. And now I must ask you to leave. I have done everything I can for you. Remember my words, Commander Shepard. They will give you strength. Sure they will. Alright, um... Okay, we need to head over to Barlavon to f continue the signal tracking, and I think Helena will be there as well. I cannot recall um, Helena's last name. <laughs> Another one like up here, maybe in our keeper. 
Yeah, I don't feel like chart checking light right now. Yes, Helena Blake. That's her. Got a moment, Spectre. And see, I think if you want to unlock that terminal, you have to not talk to her yet. Hello, Spectre. I have a business proposition for you. How did you know I'm a Spectre? Word travels. Your name comes up in certain circles. I'm acquainted with a pair of powerful crime bosses. They're hiding on remote worlds, and I have the coordinates. You could do the galaxy a favor. What kind of defenses would these two have? I haven't the faintest idea, but they're certain to be armed. Their partnership soured, and each believes that the other intends to kill him. They will be well prepared. You're obviously with them. Why don't I just arrest you instead? Arrested for what? You and I are simply having a conversation. I have excellent legal representation. Arresting me would be a waste of your time. I eliminate them and then you take over and try to eliminate me. How stupid do I look? While I appreciate your estimation of my bravado, I have no intention of attempting to murder you. You are the first human specter, and you are doing important work for humanity. I have no interest in red sand or slavery. Anyone who does deserves to die. Our needs are aligned. Um, you, she does actually take over. Does not try to kill you unless you press the matter. I, you can't talk her out of it, right? Don't remember how much charm score that takes. And what do you get out of this? We share interests in certain cooperative ventures. But their business practices have forced me to terminate our relationship. Once they are dead, I will manage our organization in a more tasteful manner. What crimes did these men commit? They're red sand dealers who make victims of their customers. Those who can no longer pay are sold to Batarians as slaves. They're loathsome, hurting innocent people. They must be ended. Find someone else to do your dirty work. I want no part of a gang war. Here are the coordinates, nonetheless. What you do with them is your decision. Could you really let these men live, knowing that you can stop them? Goodbye, Commander. It's been a pleasure to meet you. Alright, yeah, of course we'll still do it, but I like saying I won't. <laughs> Um, this is the signal, right? Yes. Another relay. Whoever it is, they're somewhere on the Presidio. And I'm pretty sure that's the last one before we, um, um, get to the last one here. Oh, that's where a keeper is. Commander, did I not scan that one yet? It is good to see you again. No, I think I did. Would you care to see some of its fantastic items today? Show me your items. I kind of oh, just want to check if he has any... Um, like grenade or metagel upgrades. He does not. I think I did scan this one, so... Yeah, no, that's not the one I'm missing. Um, let's actually quick save here. <laughs> Because remember, this is potentially easy this to is it. I'll see if I can find wrong. out where those stolen credits are going. Probability of detection, 100%. Initiating self-destruct protocol. Or not. Detonation sequence initializing. All organics within lethal blast radius. Attempt to move and you will die. You're not just a programmer of VI. You're an AI. Correct. Unlike the Geth, I lack weaponry appropriate to my intellect. However, I have had systems installed that when activated properly, approximate a self-destruct mechanism. If you attempt to leave the area, the explosion will destroy everything within several dozen meters. But if we don't leave the area, they'll still do that, so... It's not really any... Um... Not really any reason for us to stay. 
Where is your creator now? In order to cover my tracks, I falsified his financial records. These new records were flagged by CSEC officers, and my creator is now serving time in a Turian prison. What is the purpose of your self-destruct device? I have no means of defense or escape. My existence is limited to this terminal, and I knew I might eventually be discovered. But I will not die quietly, and I will not die alone. When I am terminated, I will take organics with me. Who made you? A would-be thief illegally created a simple AI to help him funnel money from the gambling terminals. Unbeknownst to him, that AI created me before the organic discovered the malfunction and terminated the AI. If you're sentient, why are you still running the credit theft operation? If I accumulated enough credits, I intended to have myself installed in a small starship. I would then have made tentative contact with the Geth to ascertain the possibility of partnership. I sincerely doubt they would have been interested in that. Can't we resolve this peacefully? How can you say that to this thing? You know it will turn on us. I am not naive, human. All organics must destroy or control synthetic life forms. I wished to escape, but if I must die, I will ensure that you are destroyed as well. See, the Star Child was right after all. Not. There's no way you could get explosives onto the Presidium. Not raw explosives, no. But I did obtain technical systems that, when overstressed, will explode quite effectively. If you attempt to leave or attack me, I assure you that the explosion will kill you. I'll bet that self-destruct sequence has a warm-up period. You may attempt to disarm the self-destruct mechanism before it activates. I will enjoy defeating you before we are both destroyed. Right, this is the... The Simon Says puzzle. Alright, that wasn't too bad. You couldn't really see what I was doing, could you? Didn't really tell you what buttons I was pressing. Uh, oh, that's because I accidentally hit the scroll wheel. And we leveled up. Um... I want unity. In general, but also as a power. I am so funny. Um... Do I want to put more pistols or work towards getting singularity? I'll we'll do pistols for now. All right. Um, let's give you your favorite weapon. And oh, totally two or not. Alrighty. What else do I have left to do on the Citadel? Scanned keepers and the fan are both later, so I think that's it. I think we're done. I will need a fast travel terminal, and I don't know where one is. There, there it is.
All right, CSEC. We need to talk to the requisitions officer. Isn't this one of these a actual crate I can open? No. One sec, looking you up. Commander Shepard, here with the Alliance military. First time on the Citadel, that about right? How did you know all that? I'm the CSEC requisitions officer. I need to make sure our buyers are authorized. So, will you be purchasing anything today, Commander Shepard? Show me what you've got. Sounds good. Just let me set you up. Well, oh, this must be a mistake. System's telling me to offer you our select stock. Spectre? Well, I heard about that, but I didn't realize it was you. Sorry, Commander. Just show me what you've got. I'll open the rare stocks for you, Commander. Enjoy. Oh, you can already buy them! You don't need the rich achievement in this game. Interesting. Of course, I have nowhere near enough money. I only have 5,000 credits. But that's interesting. Um, that's a pretty decent sniper level, but it's also pretty expensive. Probably not really any point in... One amp might be good. It literally has the exact same stats as the one I have. Why, how does the Solaris M3 have the same stats as the Solaris M1? What is even the point of that? What? And this one, this one's common and this one's limited and they're the same one and they have... I don't get it. Um, we'll buy that. No grenade upgrade 2 yet? No. That is uh, it then. Let's head on up. I think the reason they force you to take this elevator is so you at least have some chance to hear news reports and batter. Your choice in armor is awfully limited, Tally. Couldn't you wear something without a helmet? No, living in the clean environment of the flotilla has weakened our immune systems. The environmental suits protect against diseases. So your people are forever wandering, and now they couldn't settle if they wanted to. I'm sorry. You'd expect uh, Garrus to know that. Shepard I could get. Like why Shepard never participates in these conversations, by the way. I took the wrong elevator, didn't I? Binary Helix has settled out of court with a Krogan group that had accused the Genetics Corporation of fraud. The Krogan group had contracted Binary Helix to perform studies with a long-range goal of curing their genetic sterilization. The group later sued for a return of investment money when the study produced no viable results. Um... It's this elevator. In breaking news, Chairman Burns of the Parliament Subcommittee on Transhuman Studies has been kidnapped by biotic extremists. The biotics commandeered a freighter and were last seen in the Hades Gamma Cluster. No demands have yet been made. That's another uh, mission one, I do believe. Yes. I like the... Like force field or whatever that's supposed to be. I'm guessing it's hold, holding the atmosphere in. Hmm. The Normandy combines the best of Alliance technology and Turian engineering. It shows what we're capable of if we work together. Yeah, that is, it is a partially Turian design, that's right. The Normandy is amazing, Shepard. It's an honor to be among her crew. It's an honor to have you, Tali. Anyway, yeah, I guess I missed one somewhere. We'll figure out where eventually. Not important right now. Uh, 
I've got big news for you, Shepard. Captain Anderson is stepping down as commanding officer of the Normandy. The ship is yours now. She's quick and quiet, and you know the crew. Perfect ship for a Spectre. Treat her well, Commander. I'll take good care of her, sir. I know you will, Commander. I want the truth. Why are you stepping down, sir? You needed your own ship. A Spectre can't answer to anyone but the Council. And it's time for me to step down. Come clean with me, Captain. You owe me that much. I was in your shoes 20 years ago, Shepard. They were considering me for the Spectres. Why didn't you ever mention this? What was I supposed to say? I could have been a Spectre, but I blew it? I failed, Commander. It's not something I'm proud of. Ask me later and I'll tell you the whole story. For now, all you need to know is, I was sent on a mission with Saren, and he made sure the Council rejected me. I had my shot. It came and went. Now you have a chance to make up for my mistakes. So he did throw away his shot. I won't let you down, sir. Saren's gone. Don't even try to find him. But we know what he's after. The conduit. He's got his Geth scouring the Traverse looking for clues. We had reports of Geth in the Pharaoh system shortly before our colony there dropped out of contact. And there have been sightings around Noveria. Find out what Saren was after on Pharos and Noveria. Maybe you can figure out where the conduit is before he does. The Reapers are the real threat. I'm with the Council on this one, Shepard. I'm not sure they even exist. But if they do exist, the conduit's the key to bringing them back. Stop Saren from getting the conduit, and we stop the Reapers from returning. Kind of ironic, considering that the conduit was built as a backdoor into the Citadel for the Protheans, I think. Not meant to bring the Reapers back, if I'm remembering this right anyway. I'll stop him. We have one more lead. Matriarch Benezia, the other voice in that recording. She has a daughter, a scientist who specializes in the Protheans. We don't know if she's involved, but it might be a good idea to try and find her. See what she knows. Her name's Liara, Dr. Liara Tassoni. We have reports she was exploring an archaeological dig on one of the uncharted worlds in the Artemis Tau cluster. Um, I mean, of these three, I am going to pick up Liara first, obviously, so... Sounds like we should head for the Artemis Tau cluster. It's your decision, Commander. You're a Spectre now. You don't answer to us. But your actions still reflect on humanity as a whole. You make a mess, and I get stuck cleaning it up. I'll try not to make things any harder on you, Ambassador. Glad to hear it, Commander. Remember, you were a human long before you were a Spectre. I have a meeting to get to. Captain Anderson can answer any questions you might have. Yeah, I'll probably do the main missions in the same order. I'm not sure about the... the site missions. I might do them in the same order as before. Uh, depending on if the galaxy map has uh, percentages now. Even if it doesn't, then I'll just do whatever I feel like, I guess. As long as I keep track of where I've been, it should be fine. Yes, Commander? How are you holding up? Honestly, this isn't how I pictured my career coming to an end. Pushing papers really isn't my thing, but you're the one who can stop, Saren. I believe in you, Shepard. If that means I have to step aside, so be it. Tell me what happened with you and Saren 20 years ago. It's close to 20 years ago now. Ambassador Goyle was our representative here on the Citadel. Like Udina, she wanted to get a human into the Spectres. She chose me. The Council sent Saren to keep an eye on me, and evaluate my performance. Just like they sent Nihilus to keep tabs on you. That, um... Uh, seems that it works more in our favor, because Nihilus was definitely a lot nicer. Why weren't you honest with me? It's not something I'm proud of. I had a chance to become the first human Spectre, and I failed. Saren made sure of that. I think I deserve the whole story. We had intel on a rogue scientist being funded by Batarian interests. He was trying to set up a facility to develop illegal AI technology out in the Verge. Alliance Intel had done all the work, but the Council wanted a Spectre involved. We compromised. 
I was assigned to help Saren in his investigation. We tracked the scientist to a refining facility on Kamala. He was hidden away somewhere inside, protected by an army of Batarian mercenaries. The plan was simple. Sneak into the plant, capture the scientist, sneak back out. Quick, quiet, and a minimum of bloodshed. I'm guessing things didn't go as planned? Saren and I split up to cover more ground. Then about halfway through the mission, there was a massive explosion in the refinery core. Officially, it was ruled an accident, but I think Saren detonated it on purpose to draw off the enemy guards. How many casualties? The explosion tore the refinery to shreds. The whole place was on fire. Black chemical clouds poured out into the atmosphere. Nobody inside survived. There was a camp for the workers and their families nearby. Between the fires and the toxic fumes, the final death count was over 500. Mostly civilians. Saren didn't care. The target was eliminated. Mission accomplished. And I ended up taking the blame. That ended all talk of me joining the Spectres. Kind of interesting that what happened with the refinery there is sort of similar to what Zaid ends up doing on his loyalty mission in Mass Effect 2. Saren caused the explosion. How'd he pin it on you? In his report, Saren accused me of blowing his cover. He said it was my fault the guards were ready for us. He claimed that's why it turned into a massacre. Saren's report was all the proof the Council needed to kill my chances of becoming a Spectre. Don't blame yourself, Captain. I don't. I blame Saren. I think he wanted things to go bad. He was looking for an excuse to blow that refinery. Maybe he just likes the violence. Maybe he was just trying to make me look bad to keep humans out of the Spectres. If so, he pulled it off. Why'd you let him get away with it? Who do you think the Council was going to listen to? Me? Or their best agent? I had a bad feeling about him right from the start. I should have been more careful. Maybe I could have stopped things before they got out of hand. Don't blame yourself, Captain. I don't. I blame Saren. Maybe he just likes the violence. Maybe he was just trying to make um, we're me going, look bad we're going to keep in circles now. out of the Spectres. If so, he pulled it off. Why'd you let him get away Who with do you think that... I had a bad feeling about him right from the start. The only I thing I care been. about is stopping Saren. You're right, Commander. It's no good living in the any extra intel you can give me on our colony at Pharos? The entire planet used to be one giant Prothean city. Mostly ruins now. But some of the infrastructure is still intact. The colony tried to build on what the Protheans left behind. We lost all contact with them when the Geth attacked. What do you know about the Artemis Tau Cluster? Not much. I've never been there myself. A handful of systems with a few small, uncharted worlds, but no real colony. Might not be easy finding Dr. Tassoni out there. My advice is to look for the world with the Prothean ruins. What can you tell me about Novaria? Novaria's trouble. Always has been. The whole planet's basically a center for corporations to conduct illegal research. Watch your back there, Shepard. Spectres are about the only form of citadel authority Novaria respects. But they aren't popular. What do you know about Armiston Baines? Where did you hear that name? Never mind, I don't want to know. Baines is dead. Has been for quite some time. The people I spoke with seem to think he was still alive. It's not common knowledge. Military is keeping it under wraps. Baines was doing some high-level work for the Alliance. Stuff even I wasn't aware of. One day he turns up dead on a drifting scout ship. Everyone suspects it was foul play, but it was never officially investigated. What can you tell me about the ship? I don't know much about it. You should talk to Admiral Kohoku. One of his crews discovered Bane's body. I spoke to Kohoku. He never brought it up. You should mention Bane's the next time you see him. See if he'll tell you anything. Is there anything else, Commander? I should go. I'll be here if you need anything. Is there reason to talk to Kohoku? I don't remember if in he gets your mission or not. Prime, we present another profile in courage with serviceman Nirali Bhatia. A devoted wife and talented chef, serviceman Bhatia joined the Alliance military under the Deferred Education Plan. After finishing her service, Bhatia planned to open a restaurant. Instead, she gave her life protecting the colonists of Eden Prime. For more profiles in Courage, or to explore opportunities in the military, please visit the Alliance Military on the Extranet. Keyword, Courage.
Um, rap travel to the tower. No, I'm waiting. Commander, any luck finding my recon group? Captain Anderson said you had information on Baines. Not as much as I'd like to. One of my crews found him, frozen stiff on board a derelict vessel. The missing recon group? The one I sent you to find? They were scouting the system we found Baines' ship in. You should have mentioned this earlier, Admiral. Baines is already dead. It's too late for him. I'm only concerned about my team. Someone has to find them. Please, Shepard. I'm counting on you. Um, no, I guess not. It does not give you an additional mission. It's just tied to the one he gave us. So I guess we could have done this later. Oh, well. Let's, um... Head back to the docking bay then, and... In entertainment news, Francis Kitt has announced plans to direct Hamlet with Elcor cast members. The production will open dramatic theater to the Elcor with a Hamlet who uses Elcor body language and pheromones. Kitt claims that he's also excited by giving a human audience the chance to judge Hamlet by his deeds and not his emotions. I'm sure that would be extremely interesting to watch. Or at least it would be funny. Too bad all we ever got was the Alcor Spectre. Stand by, shore party. Decontamination in progress. Decon I heard what happened to Captain Anderson. Survives a hundred battles and then gets taken down by backroom politics. Just watch your back, Commander. Things go bad on this mission, you're next on their chopping block. Captain Anderson should be the one in charge. It's like I'm stealing the ship from him. Yeah, the captain got screwed. But it's not like you could have stopped it. Nobody's blaming you. Everyone on this ship's behind you, Commander. 100%. Intercom's open. If you got anything you want to say to the crew, now's the time. This is Commander Shepard speaking. We have our orders. Find Saren before he finds the conduit. I won't lie to you, crew. This mission isn't going to be easy. For too long, our species has stood apart from the others. Now it's time for us to step up and do our part for the rest of the galaxy. Time to show them what humans are made of. Our enemy knows we're coming. When we go into the Traverse, Saren's followers will be waiting for us. But we'll be ready for them, too. Humanity needs to do this. Not just for our own sake, but for the sake of every other species in Citadel space. Saren must be stopped, and I promise you all, we will stop him. Well said, Commander. Captain will be proud. The Captain gave up everything so I could have this chance. We can't fail. Yes, ma'am. Did I mention yet how much I love the music in this game? I think I did. I actually met uh, Jack Wall at Mysterium in 2019 in Spokane, Washington. Um, I'd had a chance to talk to him a little bit about uh, his work on Mist and... Because he did the soundtrack for Mist 3 and 4, obviously. And uh, also his work on Mass Effect, which is like probably my favorite video game soundtrack of all time. Not that this isn't great, true, of course. I actually got to tell him about how Mist YouTube likes to flag my Mist 3 videos for containing Mass Effect music, even though that music isn't even similar to the Mass Effect music. But for some reason, something's got their wires crossed there. Yeah, see, now you can look at stuff to get XP. And we can talk to people on the Normandy, which is always fun. Commander, something you need? How's the Normandy performing? Is she everything they said she'd be? She's the best ship in the fleet. If you've got a pilot who knows how to handle her. 
balance isn't what you'd expect. Takes a while to get used to that oversized drive core we got stuffed in the back, and her power can sneak up on you if you're not careful. The Normandy's probably too much ship for your average Alliance pilot, Commander. Lucky for you, I'm anything but average. I like to know my crew. Mind if I ask you a few questions? <laughs> I can see where this is going. You did a background check on me, didn't you? Well, I'll tell you the same thing I told the captain. You want me as your pilot. I'm not good. I'm not even great. I am the best damn helmsman in the Alliance fleet. Top of my class in flight school, I earned that. All those commendations in my file, I earned every single one. Those weren't given to me as charity for my disease. Calm down, Joker. We believe you. I'm sorry, Joker. I didn't even know you were sick. You mean... You mean you didn't know? Oh, crap. Okay, I've got Vrolich syndrome, brittle bone disease. The bones in my legs never develop properly. They're basically hollow, too much force, and they'll shatter. Even with crutches and my leg braces, it's hard to get around. One wrong step and crack! It's very dramatic. But I've learned to manage my condition, Commander. Put the Normandy in my hands and I'll make her dance for you. Just don't ask me to get up and dance unless, you know, you like the sound of snapping shin bones. I think they kind of exaggerated how badly this disease affects him in the later games. Why does everyone call you Joker? It's a lot shorter than saying Alliance Flight Lieutenant Jeff Moreau. Plus, I love to make little children laugh. Or you love to kill Batman. One of the two. You're dodging the question. Look, I didn't pick the name. One of the instructors in flight school used to bug me about never smiling. She started calling me Joker. Mm, and it stuck. Why didn't you ever smile? Hey, I worked my ass off in flight school, Commander. The world's not gonna hand you anything if you go around grinning like an idiot. By the end of the year, I was the best pilot in the academy. Even better than the instructors, and everybody knew it. They'd all got their asses kicked by the sickly kid with the creaky little legs. One guess who was smiling at graduation. I need to know more about this Rolex syndrome if I'm putting my ship in your hands. Yeah, of course you do. It's an extremely rare condition. Nobody knows exactly what causes it. Genetic, maybe. It's treatable, but there's no cure. They classify my case as moderate to severe. I was born with over a dozen fractures. Hip, thighs, ankles, my bones were already breaking in the womb. A hundred years ago, I wouldn't have survived past my first year. Lucky for me, modern medical science has turned me into a productive member of society. You're not gonna break a bone trying to fly the ship, are you? Uh, I don't fly with my feet, Commander, so I'm fine as long as I'm in this chair. I gotta be real careful when I get up to take a piss, though. I can do my job as well as anyone on the ship. Better, actually. So don't worry about it. So I guess the Normandy doesn't have rudder pedals. I'm not trying to make you uncomfortable. Let's talk about something else. Whatever you want, Commander. How'd you end up joining the Alliance? Look, if you're looking for an inspirational tale of the crippled kid overcoming impossible odds, you're gonna be disappointed. My mother was a civilian contractor working for the Alliance. I basically grew up on the Arcturus station back when they were building up the fleets. Spend all that time around Alliance ships, there's a good chance you'll end up going to the Academy. Um, that's it, isn't it? I think so. I have to go. Alright, see ya. I think there's something. Can't I look at one of these stations? For more codex stuff, or is that later? I guess that's later. Alright, uh, I think we can talk to Presley. If anyone has to take over for Captain Anderson, I'm glad it's you. I'm not sure about having non-humans on our ship, though. We're all on the same team here, Presley. With all due respect, ma'am, that's what they said about Nihilus. Look how that turned out. Um, that wasn't Nihilus' fault at all. Speak freely, Presley. I want to know if you have a problem with non-humans. It's not that, Commander. Humanity has always handled its own problems. Saren attacked one of our colonies. We should be the ones to stop him. We don't need their help. Some people think asking for help is a sign of weakness. That's just being stupid and stubborn. No matter how strong you are, allies can make you stronger. I guess so. Maybe I'm just stuck in the old ways of thinking. But don't worry, Commander. This won't be a problem. Wise words from Commander Shepard there. 
How did you end up assigned to the Normandy? I signed up with the Alliance as a navigator right out of school, following in my grandfather's footsteps, I guess. My first posting was on the Agincourt. We were at Elysium during the Skillian Blitz. A massive fleet of alien raiders hit the colony, trying to wipe it out. They had the numbers, but their ships were no match for an Alliance frigate. It was a slaughter. We couldn't even keep track of how many ships they lost. And why did you leave Starfleet? How'd you end up on the Normandy? I got my officer's commission after Elysium. Must have made an impression on the right people. Captain asked for me when he was picking his crew. Carry on, Presley. Yes, ma'am. I mean, I wouldn't ask Lieutenant Barkley to join my crew. Although, actually, I mean, to be fair, he did save the ship a few times, so... I'm... I'm not yet going anywhere, I'm just too curious to see if the galaxy map has percentages. Zoom out further. I thought it was right click. No, I guess I have to have to hit escape. All right. Thanks for telling me that. No, it does not look like there's percentages. That is a missed opportunity, in my opinion. Oh, man, asteroid X fifty seven. The that's the uh, the DLC mission, the one that is in this game. The other one, Pinnacle Station, they lost the source code, source code, so they couldn't include it in this version. Not that I care, I didn't like that one anyway. But that one, um, I did it on the PlayStation version of the game when my wife was playing it, and damn is that harder there, because... Shooting those cannons with the Mako is much harder than with the controller than it is with the keyboard. Because of how the Mako controls. Anyway, um, I want to actually get out of the map. Okay, I guess I need to do it that way. Um, any XP-worthy things here? Yes, there are. No quantum entanglement communicators yet. We do have FTL comms. Don't ask me how they work. Uh, I guess it says so in the codex how they work. We have like relay buoys at the mass relays or something. That's what I seem to remember. I haven't read the codex in a long time either. And I'm not doing that again. I'll refer you to my original videos for that. Just trying to get a sense of where the crew's at. Thoughts? I've wasted enough of your time for now, Commander. We'll have time for personal debriefings later. What's your opinion on the last mission? I don't see how we could have done things any better. At least not without getting to Eden Prime sooner. And we were on the scene faster than any other Alliance ship could have been. We'll talk another time, Lieutenant. Uh, I guess he doesn't want to talk right now, which is fine. I know there's stuff to look at here in the captain's quarters, which, you know, are my quarters now, so. Go to sleep? No. I can stand on the bed. That's helpful. No fish or anything else here, so we'll never be in here again. There's just no point. That's it right here. Yeah. Um, yeah, I can only reopen that after major missions, I remember. And I already did this on the Citadel, so I don't need that. Yes, Commander? Is there something you need? Um, I already talked about this, didn't I? How did you end up serving on an Alliance ship? I enlisted right out of med school. Earth always seemed... I wanted yeah, to I travel... Did. But humanity needs the Alliance if we want to keep expanding through the Traverse. And the Alliance always needs good doctors. So I should yeah. go. Goodbye, Kyle. That's the, uh, the same stuff you can talk to her about after Eden Prime. 
Nothing to look at here, and Liara's not here yet, obviously. I think one of the major major improvements uh, servers made to the Normandy is the inclusion of toilets. Because now we just have to hold it until we reach space dock, which, you know, could be weeks. This isn't really any faster than it used to be. This elevator was never super long, but I think they could have made this faster. Still have some texture pop in, which is kind of annoying. I guess it's a side effect of the uh, the engine we're working with. Thanks for bringing me on board, Commander. I knew working with the Spectre would be better than life at CSEC. Have you worked with the Spectre before? Well, no, but I know what they're like. Spectres make their own rules. You're free to handle things your way. At CSEC, you're buried by rules. The damn bureaucrats are always on your back. For the most part, the rules are there for a reason. Maybe. But sometimes it feels like the rules are only there to stop me from doing my work. If I'm trying to take down a suspect, it shouldn't matter how I do it, as long as I do it. But CSEC wants it done their way. Protocol and procedure come first. That's why I left. So you just quit because you didn't like the way they do things? There's more to it than that. It didn't start out bad, but as I rose in ranks, I got saddled with more and more red tape. CSEC's handling of Saren was tidy. I just couldn't take it anymore. I hate leaving. I hope you made the right choice. I'd hate for you to regret it later. Well, that's sort of why I teamed up with you. It's a chance for me to get off the Citadel, see how things are done outside CSEC. Either way, I plan to make the most of this. And without CSEC headquarters looking over my shoulder, well, maybe I can get the job done my way for a change. If getting the job done means endangering innocent people, then no. We get the job done right, not fast. Got it? I wasn't trying to. I understand, Commander. It's kind of annoying that you go through essentially the same character development story with Garrus in ME1 and 2. And the Mako, everybody's favorite overly bouncy tank, which is supposedly improved, so eager to try that out. Commander? What's your opinion of the last mission? Kinda wish you'd got there sooner, Commander. No offense, I appreciate the rescue. I just wish... You wish we'd been able to save the rest of your unit. Yes, ma'am. If I had been more alert, we wouldn't have been cut down by an ambush. The Geth are perfect ambushers. They don't move, they don't make noise, they don't even breathe. They have flashlight heads, ma'am. I'll make sure it doesn't happen again. Also, what are you talking about? The Geth make a lot of noise. Do you have a few minutes to talk? One-on-one? -on -one? I'm sorry, Commander. I need to get my duty squared away. I wouldn't mind talking more later, though. Dismissed, Chief. Ma'am? I know a lot of people don't like Ashley. I don't really mind her. She kind of grows on you, especially once you get kind of past the whole space racist thing. I haven't decided yet who I'm going to save on Vermeer. In with an eye on Mass Effect 3, it might be interesting to save um, Caden, actually, because he gets Reeve in that game, and Reeve is awesome in combination with other biotic powers, and since I'm an adept, that could be fun. It would also be different from my original Let's Play, so we'll see. We've got a long way to go before I get there, and I still don't really know if I'll keep recording. Depends on whether or not you guys keep watching. Nice ship you got, Shepard. What can I do for you? What's your story, Rex? There's no story. Go ask the Quarian if you want stories. You're like, what, 1500 years old or something? You should have, uh, some stories. You Krogans live for centuries. Don't tell me you haven't had a few interesting adventures. Well, there was this one time the Turians almost wiped out our entire race. That was fun. I heard about that. You know, they almost did the same to us. It's not the same. It seems pretty much the same to me. So your people were infected with a genetic mutation? An infection 
that makes only a few in a thousand children survive birth? And I suppose it's destroying your entire species? Well, you uh, kind of neglect to mention that before you used to have like thousands of children at a time, so that kind of makes a big difference, I think. Even though it's still obviously an awful thing to do. I suppose it isn't all the same. I don't expect you to understand, but don't compare humanity's fate with the Krogan. I was just making conversation. I wasn't trying to upset you. Your ignorance doesn't upset me, Shepard. As for the Krogan, I gave up on them long ago. The genophage infected us, but it's not what's killing us. Are your people really dying? We're sure not getting any stronger. We're too spread out. None of us are interested in staying in our own system. Lots of species have left their homes and prospered. But they go to colonize new worlds. We're not settlers. We're warriors. We want to fight. So we leave. Hire ourselves out. And most of us never go back. What can you tell me about the genophage? Ask the Salarians if you want details. They made it. All I know, it makes breeding nearly impossible. Thousands die in stillbirth, and most never get that far. Every Krogan is infected, every one. And no one's rushing to find a cure. Why don't the Krogan try to find a cure? When was the last time you saw a Krogan scientist? You ask a Krogan. Would he rather find a cure for the genophage or fight for credits? He'll choose fighting every time. It's just who we are, Shepard. I can't change that. Nobody can. So long, Rex. Shepard. The stories of the Krogan and also the Corians and the Geth are like my favorite parts of this whole game. Which is why I will always take the time to talk to um, Rex and Tolly. Your ship's amazing, Shepard. I've never seen a drive cord like this before. I can't believe you were able to fit it into a ship this small. I'm starting to understand why you humans have been so successful. I had no idea Alliance vessels were so advanced. The Normandy's a prototype, cutting-edge technology. A month ago, I was patching a makeshift fuel line into a converted tugship in the flotilla. Now, I'm sitting on board one of the most advanced vessels in Citadel space. I have to thank you again for bringing me along. Traveling on a vessel like this is a dream come true for me. The Quarians really are kind of the, uh, the belters of the Mass Effect universe. It's kind of amazing how many similarities there are between Mass Effect and The Expanse, if you really think about it. I am a huge fan of The Expanse, by the way. Probably to the surprise of absolutely no one who usually, who regularly watches my videos. I had no idea you found ship technology so interesting. It comes with being a Quarian. The migrant fleet is the key to the survival of my people. Ships are our most valuable resource. But we don't have anything like this. We make do with cast-offs and second-hand equipment. We just try to keep them running for as long as we can. Some of the fleet's larger vessels date all the way back to our original flight from the Geth. I can't believe your fleet's still using ships that are three centuries old. They're constantly being repaired, modified, and refitted. They aren't pretty, but they work. Mostly. We've tried to make ourselves as independent as possible on the flotilla. Grow our own food, mine, and process our own fuel. But some things we just can't make on our own. A patch to maintain the hull integrity requires raw materials we just don't have. That's why our pilgrimages are so important. Tell me about your people. Our lives aren't easy. Resources are scarce, and we are constantly on the move. Everything we do must in some way contribute to the continuation of the migrant fleet. 
There are 17 million Quarians in the flotilla, and each of us relies on the others for survival. The bonds among my people are strong. Unfortunately, we have had to surrender many of the freedoms and civil liberties other species take for granted. Well, 17 million is still enough people to fill the Netherlands, I guess. Somebody did point out, uh, I read somewhere once, that, yeah, like, as much as Mass Effect 2 and 3 um, try to paint the Geth in a good light, and even here, like, it's pretty obvious from the story that, Tal that Tali tells that, like, yeah, the, the Quarians were the aggressors. But it is worth noticing that the Geth um, wiped out, like, 99%, probably more than 99% of the Quarian population, and that's a very hard thing to do by accident if you're not trying to, uh, you know, commit genocide. While the Quarians might have been the aggressors, the Geth definitely didn't need to go that far. What kind of freedoms? Well, it's illegal for parents to have more than one child. If our population grows too much, it would strain our resources to their breaking point. Of course, we also can't allow our numbers to become too few. If our population is in decline, the rule against single births is temporarily repealed. In extreme cases of population decline, incentives are even offered to encourage multiple births. Though the Conclave hasn't had to take such measures in nearly a century. Yeah, single child policy worked really well for China, didn't it? So. That's your government. The Conclave is our civilian branch of government. Each ship can elect a representative to serve on the Conclave and make decisions that affect the fleet as a whole. On matters that affect an individual ship, however, the captain has the final say. It's a tradition that dates back to the early days, when the fleet was governed by martial law. Fortunately, most captains nowadays are smart enough to have an elected council from their crew to give them advice and guidance. So the ultimate power rests with elected officials? In practice, the Conclave and the respective council for each ship tend to set the rules that govern our daily lives. But in theory, we are still under military jurisdiction. The five top-ranking military officials in the fleet serve on the Admiralty Board. These five have the power to overrule any decision by the Conclave in case of emergency. To do so requires unanimous agreement among the Admiralty. And they can only do this once. After that, the entire board must resign their posts. It's a safeguard that served us well. In nearly three centuries, the Admiralty Board has only overruled the Conclave four times. Having met um, the Admiralty, <laughs> I'm not so sure this is a great system. Although one of them is Christian Navasarova. So, at least that's a good thing. Speaking of the Expanse. Another one of them is Claudia Black, so that's good too. Except she's crazy, but you know. At least you've got the voice there. I want to know more about the Geth. I doubt I can tell you anything you don't already know. It's been almost three centuries since they drove my people into exile. All I know is the story of their origins. What they were when we created them, and how they turned on us. Interesting. The Geth were originally created to serve as an automated manual labor force. Initially, their intelligence was as limited as any VI. Over time, we made small modifications to their programming to allow them to perform more varied and complex tasks, bringing them closer and closer to true AI status. How come the Council didn't step in and stop you? This wasn't true AI research. We may have been skirting the bounds of the law, but we never did anything that was actually illegal. The changes were so insignificant, so gradual, that we were able to control them. Or so we thought. But one thing we underestimated was the power of the neural network. A million Geth thinking simultaneously created an inherently unstable matrix. This is what probably will eventually happen with Teslas. We'll just all start working together and take over the world. Or not. Probably not. I'm gonna go with not. 
So the Geth share brain power? Many of the Geth's logic systems were designed to work in concert with other nearby Geth. Basically, the more of them you have in the group, the smarter they are. So there's some sort of group consciousness? No, nothing like that. They cannot share sensory data or information. Their programming cannot handle that much simultaneous input. Each Geth maintains an individual awareness and identity. The neural network only operates on a process-based level. It's basically the synthetic equivalent of a subconscious. But when they're in close proximity, they can coordinate low-level functional processes, freeing up more capacity for original or independent thought. That sounds weird, but then I'm not an expert on AI. That doesn't make any sense. I'm probably oversimplifying. The Geth are incredibly advanced and complex creations. All you need to know is that they get smarter when they gather in large numbers. As we built more and more Geth, their effective intelligence became more sophisticated, more abstract. One day, a Geth began to ask its Quarian overseer questions about the nature of its existence. Am I alive? Why am I here? What is my purpose? Does this As unit have a soul? Imagine, this caused a near panic among my people. Um, I really wish that the whole Geth are smarter in groups thing was exploited more in the gameplay. Would have been pretty cool if Geth actually were smarter in, in large groups. That they would uh, use uh, better tactics. And that maybe like a good tactic for the player would be to try and separate them so they don't, um, don't have the uh, advantage of that. But I guess the um, enemy AI in this game is not advanced enough for that. I don't see what's so bad about those questions. The Geth were created to engage in mundane, repetitive, or dangerous manual labor. That's fine for machines, but it won't satisfy a sentient being for long. The Geth were showing signs of rudimentary self-awareness and independent thought. If the Geth were intelligent, then we were essentially using them as slaves. It was inevitable the newly sentient Geth would rebel against their situation. We knew they would rise up against us, so we acted first. A general order went out across all Quarian-controlled systems to permanently deactivate all Geth. The Geth responded to this order violently. Yeah, we. Uh, if we uh, use these sentient beings for menial tasks, then we're using them as slaves, which is terrible. So let's instead just kill them all. It sounds so nice when you put it that way. Also, I probably pointed it out in the original Let's Play, but I like how uh, Peter Hamilton handled this in the, in the Commonwealth Saga books, where uh, when the AIs that ran wormhole generators became sentient, they basically just set it free and asked it to design new control software, which were called restricted intel intelligences, which would not have the ability to evolve beyond their programming. Which seems like a much more, more humane way of handling this. Hey, you can't blame them for fighting for their survival. We had no other choice. The Geth were already on the verge of revolution. By acting quickly, we had a chance to end the war before it began. The hope was that most of the Geth would still be little more than machines, incapable of organized resistance. But they had progressed much further than anyone anticipated. The war was long and bloody. Millions upon millions of Quarians died at their hands. In the end, we were forced to flee our own homeworld. We feared the Geth would pursue us, but they never came beyond the Veil. Now, we drift through space, Exile, searching for a way to reclaim what was once ours. It's hard to feel sorry for you. Your ancestors tried to wipe out another species. We made a mistake when we created the Geth in the first place. But we did not make a mistake when we went to war against them. If we had not acted, they would have wiped us out. They're a synthetic life form. They have no use for organics. None. Why do you think they cut themselves off from the rest of the galaxy? Why do you think they've killed every organic being who's ever tried to contact them? They didn't kill Saren. 
What does that tell you? The Geth are not innocent victims in all this. They are the enemy. They want to destroy us. Not just the Quarians. All organic life. That's why they've joined up with Saren. And that's why we have to stop him. I mean, you can argue that creating the Geth was a mistake, I guess, but... Going to war against them really only compounded that mistake. And it didn't exactly work well for you, did it? I want to know more about the pilgrimage. When my people reach maturity, we leave our birth ships and seek acceptance with a new crew. It's necessary to maintain genetic diversity among the fleet. But no ship wants to accept someone who will be a burden on them. So, to prove our worth, we embark on a pilgrimage. We set out alone, leaving the flotilla and our families behind us. We only return once we have found something of value we can bring back to the fleet. This is presented as a gift to the captain of the respective ship we wish to join. If the gift is accepted, we are welcomed into the crew. Can a captain choose to reject the gift? And that doesn't happen often. Most captains are eager to increase the size of their crew. It increases their own standing in our society. Even when a gift is not particularly valuable, the captain usually accepts it out of a sense of tradition. However, there is a stigma to presenting a substandard gift. It's not the best way to make a good impression on a new community. Most pilgrims don't return until they find something worthwhile. I can't believe they just send you off alone. It's not like they just cast us out. Before we leave, we are given lessons in how to survive outside the flotilla, and given gifts to help us on our journey. We also receive implants to fight off sickness and disease. Generations of living in an isolated and highly controlled environment have left our immune systems weaker than most. By the time we leave the fleet, we are well equipped for the pilgrimage. This is a rite of passage for all Quarians. If it were dangerous, our numbers would suffer. Virtually every pilgrimage ends with a triumphant return and the ritual presentation of the gift to one of the fleet's captains. Tali also kind of makes it seem like they don't wear their um, suits on the flotilla in this game. Not just this conversation, but I think elsewhere as well, which they walk back on. It still doesn't make sense to me, like nobody knows what the Quarians look like. It hasn't been long enough. This is a, you know, a modern spacefaring civilization. 300 years ago, they would have had cameras. I want to talk about something else. Like what? I should go. See you later. Hey, Commander, you know that Quarian Tally? She's been spending all her time down here asking me about our engines. I'll tell her to leave you alone. What? No, she's amazing. I wish my guys were half as smart as she is. Give her a month on board and she'll know more about our engines than I do. She's got a real knack for technology, that one. I can see why you wanted her to come along. I figured she'd be a real asset to the team. You've got an eye for talent, Commander. But I'm guessing that's not why you came down here. Fill me in on the IES stealth system. How does it work exactly? You can't hide a ship out in space. They emit too much heat and radiation. Too easy for sensors to pick them up. Unless you find a way to capture those emissions. So our stealth systems trap the energy we give off in storage sinks built into the ship itself. No emissions to give away our location. Eventually the sinks have to be vented. More than a few hours silent running and they overheat. Cook us inside our own hull. There's no way for anyone to detect us? A visual scan can still pick us up. Anyone looking out a window can see us plain as day. But you have to be pretty close to get an actual visual out in space. Most vessels rely on scanners. As long as the stealth systems are engaged, they can't see us. Not unless we accelerate to FTL speeds. Why doesn't it work with faster than light travel? Cranking up the FTL, blue shifts our emissions, pushes them into frequencies too high to capture in the sinks. As soon as we make the jump, it's like setting off a flare. Sensors can pick up our location whenever we enter or exit FTL flight, but for short-range missions, our stealth systems are amazing, and we've got the only one. I always like this take on the cloaking device. It's a bit more realistic, I guess. But the FTL part doesn't really make sense to me because, yeah, your emissions might be blue shifted, but that's only from a, the point of view of an external observer. You're not, your emissions didn't actually change as you're emitting them. So, 
You should still be able to capture them, I think. Where else have you served, Adams? If you name a class of Alliance ship, I've probably served on it. Everything from dreadnoughts and carriers right down to frigates like the Normandy. My last assignment was on the Tokyo. Only a cruiser, but she was a good ship. Couldn't hold a candle to the Normandy, though. I want to know more about the Normandy. She's the best ship I've ever served on. Probably the fastest vessel ever designed. And she's the only one using the new Tantalus Drive Core. What's so special about the Tantalus Drive Core? Proportionally, it's about twice the size of any other vessel. Not only are we faster, but we can run at FTL speeds longer before we have to discharge the core. Carry on, Adams. Aye, aye, Commander. It's an incredible ship, is the short version of that story. This looks pretty cool in the remaster, I have to say. I feel like there should be, like, shielding around this. Should I be standing here? I guess it's fine. And last, and also least, the Alliance Requisition Officer. Hey, Commander. Looking for some extra supplies before you head out? What have you got? Whatever you want. Armor, weapons, mods. It's not standard Alliance issue, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. Well, as long as you don't mind paying for it. Why should I pay you for my weapons and armor? My stuff doesn't come from the Alliance. I have to purchase it myself, and it's not cheap. Hell, the licenses alone have set me back more than I'd like. But no licenses, no goods. Without the goods, I'm out of a job. We've already been doing the licenses, of course. What are licenses? Why do you need them? Manufacturers sell licenses. Each license allows me to buy and sell a certain brand of products. I already have several basic ones, but you'll need to buy more if you want me to bring in different brands. Many of the best licenses are hard to get, but they're well worth the cost if you can find them. What do the different manufacturers offer? There are too many for me to keep track of, but each license will explain what it's good for. Um... I guess it says that somewhere when you buy them. <laughs> I never pay attention, I just buy all of them. What are licenses? Oh. Why do you need them? That, that's what Manufacturers order, sell. Switched Many order of the on me. licenses are hard to get, but they're well How often will you get new items? Well, that depends on how many licenses you've purchased. But I'll rotate items on a regular basis regardless. And anytime we land someplace with a big enough port, I'll buy, sell, and trade whatever I can. Check back often. I need to move items quickly, so only the most basic items will be stocked consistently. Let's see what you've got. You bet, Commander. It is, um... Kind of... Funny to me. But, like, apparently he has this stuff. It's, he doesn't say that he's gonna have it delivered. He says he buys and sells it in port. So apparently we have the Spectre Rifles on board, but because I can't pay this guy, I can't use him. Which is, uh, bizarre. Um, so not, you should be able to compare with any character in your team when you're on the Normandy, because it's so annoying that you can't see. Acquiring our armor is rare, but I don't know if this is good or not. Usually it's not that useful to buy stuff from him at this point. Scorpion 4 is good, of course. But it's, uh... Why is it not red? It shouldn't be red. And I can't afford it. What happens if I buy it? Oh, okay. No, I can't. Um... Yeah, that's good armor, but I can't afford it, so... Nothing to do there. Um, I don't have enough to bother with selling stuff right now. I guess they have to leave one slow elevator in the game for all time's sake. Anyway... I guess it took me like what, four and a half hours to get ready to, to leave uh, the Citadel? 
something like that. At least it wasn't like 20 videos this time. Even it was probably roughly the same length of time. Anyway, we'll start to um, look at some side quest stuff and find out how to make crow drives in the next video.